Good morning, everyone. My name is Sati Vakhadan, and I'm with the Department of Environment and Local Government. I work with Science from Secretaries as an adaptation student, as an adaptation analyst. The topic that I'm going to present to you today is updates on climate change and coastal adaptation projects in the venture. Uh, these are the topics that I'm going to present today. Uh, the role of New Brunswick Climate Change Secretariat, uh, New Brunswick Climate Change Action Plan, some of the tools, climate change that has been launched since the action plan was released, and uh, a project on uh, the environmental trust fund and regional adaptation collaboration. And um, at, uh, coastal, uh, some case studies on coastal adaptation, and uh, there was a conference held uh, uh, in um, previous weeks, so I'll be giving an update about the conference and current and future priorities uh, for adapting to climate change in the country. And the last thing is about uh, upcoming uh, training event that I'll be talking about. So, New Brunswick Climate Change Secretariat, its role, uh, the Secretariat provides provincial leadership to manage and direct climate change issues uh, in coordination and collaboration with the other, other departments in the province. So, basically, the, uh, the Secretariat is, uh, develops, uh, reports, and implements issues that, and actions to address uh, greenhouse gas reductions and adaptation. Also, the Secretariat in collaboration with other departments also engages the provincial stakeholders, uh, provincial, uh, provincial territorial, and international jurisdictions, as well as with um, England. Uh, England, sorry, our uh, England governors and Eastern uh, Canadian province uh, regions, and uh, basically the role of the, uh, the Secretary is to provide an overview of the role um, to address climate change issues. With regards to the Provincial Climate Change Action Plan, the Provincial Climate Change Action Plan was launched in 2007. And since the uh, launch of the Climate Change Action Plan, there has been um, a lot of progress made in uh, addressing actions on reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as on adaptation. So, with, uh, you know, so the plan has played a very successful role in uh, making it uh, sure that the province is on track on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and as well as making communities aware um, uh, to know about the issues about um, climate change and also uh, making the communities more resilient in the uh, to climate change impacts. Right now, the province is working in renewing its climate change action plan, and the uh, focus is as uh, with the uh, similar to the uh, previous action plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, to impact and to make communities more resilient to climate change impacts, uh, and also communicate climate change uh, education programs. Uh, we also have our uh, annual progress report released since 2007, so since uh, until now we have five progress reports released uh, for uh, this climate change action plan, and we are working for the 2012 13 climate change uh, action plan progress report. Uh, since the launch of the Climate Change Action Plan, uh, we have made a lot of progress in releasing climate tools. So, like, uh, for example, like, we have a website on current and future climate of the province. We have a website that's, uh, that's focused on climate change indicators of New Brunswick, which we can see some localized climate change in the province. Uh, there's a toolkit on sea level rise and starting comfort. Um, also, uh, just recently we've launched website on surface database of the province. Uh, there's been studies done through LIDAR uh, rules on, on, on flood risk assessment to the communities and infrastructure. Also, you know, with these, uh, with these uh, uh, products, the communities are now coming up with educational uh, toolkits and guiding documents. Also, we have several case studies and videos on climate change adaptation. So the first one, the maps and data of New Brunswick Climate Future. This is a, a website uh, which is a great tool for adaptation planning. And basically what this website does is it helps uh, you to see what the current climate looks like in the province uh, and what, the, what it's expected or projected. 
interested in Tokyo. And it's a website that has uh, 29 climate variables uh, to show the current and the predicted future climate for the province. And it includes uh, all the 29 variables have explanatory um, information. And there is also a frequently, frequently asked questions on the left hand side on the right hand side of the website to describe the methods used to conduct um, uh, the work that's on this website. I mean the, the work of the product that is uh, used in developing this website. And uh, it provides also the raw data is on the two the variables so that people can use it for their personal uh, research use. So, for example, uh, this might not be very visible or clear, but I don't, I, I'm not going to do a demo, but just tell you about this website. So, so what this website is about is um, it has maps, it shows me maps for the current climate looks like. And then also, you have um, several options to choose from what the future looks like. So, you have the data type on the second down, uh, the thing is that you, you, you can select the variables from that data type, and then you can and choose the emission scenario. That would be your high and the low emission scenario. And this one in here is showing the high emission scenario and the period is to find at 27, 21 to 2100. So what this map, uh, what this, uh, in the, how you can interpret this map is simply that the left hand side on your map shows the current climate of the province ranges from 2 degrees Celsius to 3 degrees Celsius in the north and to uh, 5 degrees to 6 degrees Celsius in the south. And by 2080, uh, it's projected that this climate is going to be, uh, we are going to see a, a range of 3 to 2.5 degrees Celsius increase in this, uh, in this uh, region of the province. So the, uh, the northern part of the province is going to uh, be so warmer, like the southern part of the province, and the southern portion of the province is going to seem like the southern part of the Ontario region. So we are going to see uh, that warmer temperature. And this is uh, another similarly for precipitation. Annual precipitation right now ranges from 1100 millimeters to 1300. And by 2018, we will see the most part of the province of the Pacific Water, and there's going to be an increase from 1100 to 1300 millimeters of rainfall distribution annually. So this is another climate change website tool that talks about uh, climate change indicators. So this is a web page which, uh, which shows you 12 climate change indicators of the province. So now what this website basically does is it demonstrates um, it gives the information on, on the observed historical data. So these, uh, this information was put together based on what data is available like this for the climate stations uh, for uh, taking into consideration those climate indicators. So basically, it provides local information about climate change to better understand how our climate is changing. So, for example, in uh, example A, you see that the river ice outbreak, the Kinetic River, goes from 1820 to 2000. And we, uh, what we are seeing is that like the river ice outbreak is becoming very variable. Sometimes it's above normal, and it sometimes it's going below normal. So what we are seeing uh, as, as a province is we have a lot of rivers on the, and, and the spring flooding is always being fluctuated. So uh, we can expect this to happen even more frequently in our coming days. And example B shows uh, the white Christmas, the probability of white Christmas in our province. So uh, the southern part of the province since 1960 to 2000, uh, the regions in the southern part of the province has have had less of white Christmas. That's two centimeters of snow on the ground on the, on the Christmas day, whereas the northern part of the province are still, have, are still receiving white Christmas, but the southern part is, um, uh, is seeing a decline in having a white Christmas. Uh, this is another example from the coastal, um, uh, uh, sorry, coastal uh, community. This is um, storm surge events in its first two maps uh, in North Cumberland County of the province. 
So what we are uh, seeing in this community is um, uh, the farm since 2000, uh, the farm needs have become frequent and also the magnitude of the farm has, become, has been increasing. Uh, this is because, uh, and, uh, and this, is, uh, this, this, is, uh, this is kind of an example that we can say, yes, the farm is getting frequent, uh, frequent, and the magnitude is also getting higher. And, um, and the 2010 uh, storm surge that we had, we could have two storms happening two times a uh, week, uh, and then the province was hit very badly. Like this, especially the North Carolina community was hit very badly, so we can expect uh, uh, similar kinds of events in our coming years. And also, uh, next one is on the sea ice extension. So the sea ice extent in the Gulf of St. Lawrence River has been uh, varying as well since 1970s to 2000. The data shows that there has been a different percentage of sea ice coverage in this region. And sea ice plays a very important role for coastal protection, wildlife habitat, and ecosystem, and as well as ice fishing for the uh, communities of New Hampshire. And with global warming and with ocean temperature rising, we can expect sea ice to decrease even more. In a coming uh, uh, this is a very interesting toolkit on um, sea level rise and studying toolkit for the coastal communities of New Brunswick. What this toolkit explains you is about how coastal communities can start plan, uh, start to plan about adaptation. Because um, a sea level is going to rise by one meter uh, by 2100 in the province. And uh, this trip would basically graphs uh, for 13 zones of the province for so one, ten, and hundred year flood scenarios. So, for example, here uh, I have the 14 re uh, regions. So, uh, this is a study done for these 14 coastal regions of the province. And what it does is, like, uh, now what you see over there, example, for the zone 14, West Maryland, uh, West Maryland, Southway. But the data line shows you the 100 year flood period, and the lighter blue line shows you the 1 year flood period. And what this um, uh, scenario is showing is, like, uh, the, the, it's going to be, uh, the flood height is going to be. Improving the time, and uh, uh, the biggest thing that we want, uh, we, we want to make a note of here is like um, by 2100, the one year flood is going to be big, um, big as the current 100 year flood, 100 year flood price that we are getting. So, this is uh, uh, an alarm, like we need to be uh, alarmed, like the uh, floods are going to be rising, and we have to be aware of these kinds of things. So this is another tool on um, flood history database uh, that was launched last year. Uh, this is basically um, a description on flood events that uh, that taken or happened in New Brunswick. So it's a database that uh, that tells you why how the flood was caused, uh, what's the flood magnitude, and the damage caused. And this is searchable by the community's name. Um, so some, some events have photos and, and, and uh, supporting information with each event attached to it. And this database is mentioned by the Department of Environment and Local Government. And the disclaimer is there in this website to let you know that you can use the information, but this information is all with tracks and various sources. So, uh, the, uh, so if you, I mean, uh, we have no, uh, there's no 100% guarantee for the use of information. Like I said, because it was mainly compiled by the various news archives and news sources, because there is damage to estimates of damage costs and all that, and it's not based on the inflation and all that kind of thing. So, anyways, but it is a very uh, interesting tool, and people can see the community how many times the communities have been flooded up with tours, and there's very good pictures there in this website.